Welcome to Inside the Mavs, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak, presented by Aura. My name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here for the latest episode of Inside the Mavs. If you're listening to this podcast, you can find it on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there, and you can also like and comment on the video if you're watching this on my YouTube channel at Kevin Gray Sports and subscribe as well and follow me all over social media at Kevin Gray Sports. A lot to get to on this episode of Inside the Mavs as the Mavericks get ready for a five-game road trip that begins in Utah on Monday before they continue that trip against the Sacramento Kings for two huge matchups that have massive Western Conference playoff implications as the Mavericks currently right now in eighth in the West as we record this conversation as they get ready to try and finish in the top six of the West in the final 12 games of the season. Of course, a team that's a season high 12 games above 500 after 70 games. We'll look at how they've gotten to this spot, having gone what they have done in the last 21 games, going 15 and six in their last 21 to set themselves up for a massive and pivotal road trip that has huge consequences in the Western Conference standings. You'll also hear from Mavericks guard Jaden Hardy as he had a chance to sit down with me for a few minutes to talk to me about how his game has continued to grow, slowing the game down, and how he and this team are preparing for a huge road trip. But for the Mavericks, as I mentioned, 15-6 and six in their last 21 games, a team that's now 20 wins this season in the clutch, the best clutch team in the NBA, get ready for a massive road trip in Utah on Monday that continues on the second night of a back-to-back on Tuesday against the Sacramento Kings before they take a couple of days off and continue that road trip in Sacktown once again. A five-game road trip over 11 days that will tell us a lot about this team and how they will be able to complete the rest of their final 12 games of the regular season. A team at 41-29 and looking up right now at both the Sacramento Kings and the Phoenix Suns, the Suns in sixth, the Kings in seventh. But of course, the Mavericks own the tiebreaker over Phoenix this season, have a chance to even the season series with Sacramento over their next couple of games starting on Tuesday against the Kings. And we know how important those games are down the stretch when you look at how tight the Western Conference standings are this season. But this is about what the Mavericks have been able to do over their last 21 games, as I mentioned, 15 and six, a team that during that span is number three in the NBA in offensive rating and number 10 in the league in defensive rating. They're doing the thing that we thought that they, if they could, they could find themselves winning between 45 and 50 games. A six and six finish will allow them to win 47 games this season. Ideally, if they're able to go, let's say nine and three in their final 12 games, that would get them to the 50-win mark. And for a Western Conference that is as deep and as talented this year, you're hoping that 50 wins can get you into the top six. But again, that just shows you how good the Western Conference has been throughout the entirety of the season. But the Mavericks have to focus on one game at a time, beginning with Utah on Monday, not looking past the Utah Jazz. That yes, will not have Chris Dunn, who has been suspended, for a couple of games after his altercation with the Houston Rockets this past weekend. But more importantly for the Mavericks, not taking the Jazz lightly, a team that can score as they look forward to their next two games against the Sacramento Kings and Demonis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox with the opportunity to even that season series. But when you look at what the Mavericks have been able to do to put this together, they have been much better on the defensive end, obviously, And more importantly, they're rebounding the basketball much better. You look at over their last 21 games, they're second in the NBA in terms of defensive rebounding, collecting nearly 36 defensive boards per contest. And while they're only getting a little over nine offensive rebounds per game, you're seeing how second chance points and converting and being efficient on the second chance rebounds that they get, that has helped this offense find some easy points for a team That's not knocking down the three-point shots very well here over the last seven, eight games. If you listened and watched my last episode with the Mavericks television voice, Mark Followell, we detailed how the Mavericks have been struggling from three and how historically you can't shoot the ball at a 33% clip from three and find yourself being successful 
especially in the playoffs. And that's where the Mavericks are over the last seven, eight games for a team that has been shooting the ball extremely well from three all season. Unfortunately, that has gone away. But what they've been able to find is really kind of a new identity in terms of how they get after teams night in and night out. A new level of physicality and toughness and, yes, poise for this team has allowed them to be now a team that's the best in the NBA in the clutch. And as I mentioned over the last 21 games, really put together the opportunity to be in this position to take advantage of their schedule down the stretch. But that starts on the inside with Daniel Gafford. You saw that in the last game against the Utah Jazz where the Mavericks had a record, a franchise record, with 18 dunks in the game, 10 of which came from Daniel Gafford, who had 24 points in the game. Yes, Luka Doncic was spectacular with the 34 points that he had and also a season-high four steals because you know how much we love talking about his defense when it comes to Luka Doncic. Kyrie Irving was a plus 37 as he continues to be veteran leader guy and really helped this team navigate the situation where his leadership is going to come into play not only in the finals 12 games of the season, but as they get into the playoffs about how to elevate toward a championship mindset for some of these individuals who may have not have been in this situation, whether it be a Daniel Gafford or a Derek Lively and others, of course, Luka Doncic, Maxi Kleba, and a couple of other guys know what it's like to make a deep playoff run to the Western Conference Finals like they did a couple of years ago. But that is the thing that we're going to be watching, at least I will be watching, down the stretch. Not only can they continue to build momentum toward the rest of the season, but can they ensure that by the time we get to the end of the season, they are playing their best basketball to give them a really golden opportunity to make a deep playoff run. More on that on the other side of the break, but before we get there, let's hear from today's sponsor of our podcast and our video, and let's hear from Aura. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description. Back here on Inside the Mavs. Again, thank you so much for hanging with, out, with us throughout that break and hearing from today's sponsor of our video and our podcast and hearing from Aura. Before we went to break, we were talking about the profile of the Mavericks and what they've done over the last 21 games. A team who at one point had won seven straight games, then lost five of six, and now are rolling again, winning seven of eight. And we detail a little bit earlier how over their last eight games, they're only shooting 33% from three. And one thing that has changed over the course of this 21-game stretch as you examine it is a team that, yes, has struggled, especially over the last week and a half or so from three, but at the same time, not hanging their heads on the offensive end when shots aren't falling and allowing that to affect their defense on the other end. And instead, you're finding a team that's growing and maturing and playing through their offensive struggles from the three-point line to still have an impact on the defensive end which is hugely important, especially when you're going to be playing a team like the Sacramento Kings in your next couple of games after you hopefully handle business against Utah. Because if you could find a way to hold teams like you're doing here recently where you held the Jazz to under 100 points, holding teams to that magical number of 110 points or less, 
this team offensively is going to score with the best of them, led by Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. We heard reporting from Mark Stein over the weekend that there is an obvious fondness between Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and the chemistry that they've developed throughout the course of the season, especially when they've been on the floor together. Again, I encourage you to watch the last episode that I did with Mark Followell as we detailed the numbers and how good the Mavericks have been with both Kyrie and Luka have been on the floor together. This team offensively is one of the best in the NBA, and they're winning games at a clip that gives you confidence that as they continue to play together, that chemistry will obviously continue to grow. Kyrie Irving right now is in the middle of a stretch where he's played the most consecutive games since the 2016 season when he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers, having played over 18 straight games right now currently for the Mavericks and doing so as he is continuing his observance of Ramadan. So things are clicking right now on all cylinders for this team, given how they have struggled through the three-point line but they have found other ways to win. P.J. Washington, who's been a big part of that, has continued to play well on the defensive end and has played his role well. And one of the things that I want to see down the stretch as well is, can he continue to improve? Can he improve on his three-point shot? Had a chance to ask him a couple of questions on Sunday during their media availability before they headed out to Utah for their road trip. And I had a chance to ask P.J., what are some of the things that you're wanting to work on? What would your evaluation be of your game currently? And has there been a mindset change from what has happened since he has come from Charlotte to Dallas that has allowed him to play so well, especially on the defensive end? Here's P.J. Washington and what he told me in answering those questions there. How would you evaluate your process in terms of learning your role and being able to get more comfortable with that night in and night out where you are with your game at this point? Uh, obviously, uh, offensively, I can be a lot better for uh... – Obviously, making shots and uh, just being into my game for that side of the ball. Defensively, I feel like I've been doing great. Uh, obviously, I can be better uh, off the ball. I feel like I've, I've had lapses and guys backdoor backdoor cutting me, so uh, I can be better at that. But on the ball, I feel like uh, I've done really good. And obviously, uh, I love playing against the best guys each every night. So, has there been a mindset change, obviously coming from Charlotte to here, in terms of a different situation, and how have you been able to grow and develop in terms of that mindset here now? Um. I wouldn't say such a mindset change. For me, it's always uh, just to go out there and do the best I can and just be aggressive uh, on both sides of the ball. So and not necessarily mindset. It's just obviously new guys, new team, new scenery. So uh, just different roles. So for Washington, it's about continuing to grow. You know how well he's been playing defensively, and we've seen him take on the toughest defensive assignments night in and night out and will continue to be leaned upon to do so and for him his confidence in his three-point shot watching him in practice on Sunday he knows that his three-point shot is going to be vital for this team to keep teams honest but more so I want us to be able to see him attack the rim be able to get to the basket for some easy buckets to continue to grow that confidence as he attacks guys off the dribble to make things easier for himself and guys are going to continue to find him in terms of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and it's going to be up to Washington Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi Kleba, who had a couple of threes made it against Utah in their 16-point win to keep defenses honest so that those lanes continue to remain open from Luka and Kyrie. And we know how well that both of them are able to penetrate into the lane and to be able to finish at the rim. Now can these guys on the outside, much like we have seen Dante Exum when he's had the opportunities to knock down shots, be able to do so, Derek Jones Jr. as he continues to pick his game back up as well. These shooters are going to have to knock down open shots at a much better rate than the 33% clip that we've seen over the last eight games to really give this team much more dynamic offense on that side of the floor. And if they can, now they're really putting pressure on teams in terms of the decision making they've got to make because they're already getting punished when you're watching pick and roll situations with Daniel Gafford and Derek Live the second working with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Now with the added, hopefully reemergence of the three point shot with guys like Tim Hardaway Jr., Maxi Kleba, and hopefully an elevation of PJ Washington's three point makes this team becomes that much more dangerous. Another thing that you and I will be watching during the final 12 games of the season. And for other guys who continue to find ways to contribute to this team, it's going to be important that everyone stay ready to continue to help this team out because they will need everyone to be able to try and get themselves in position 
to finish top six in the Western Conference. One of those players is a guy, Jaden Hardy, who you've seen in terms of the growth that he started to have as a playmaker and as someone when he has his opportunity and minutes to play has taken advantage of those opportunities. I had a chance to sit down with him for a few minutes to get his perspective on not only how the game is slowing down for him, how much he's grown as a playmaker, but what he and this team are doing to be able to get ready for this five-game stretch. And for Hardy specifically, how he has remained ready even when the opportunities haven't been there and doing what he needs to do to ensure that he's helping this team any way that he can. Here is my conversation with Mavs guard Jaden Hardy. Well, Mavs guard Jaden Hardy getting ready for a five-game road trip. The team has won seven of eight right now. What's the confidence level of this group as you guys get ready for this trip? Yeah, we're very confident. You know, we're starting to, you know, build together. We know that it's just since the trade deadline, we're starting to, you know, get better chemistry. So, you know, it feels good that we're rolling right now and we try to keep it going. You know, stay trusting each other. And, you know, I feel like everything else is going to fall in place. So. And for this team, the importance of this road trip, I'm sure you guys have talked about. Mm -hmm. But from an individual standpoint for you, how have you prepared knowing what role that you are going to be asked to play for mm -hmm. this team as they go on this trip here? Yeah, for me, it's just been the same same for me, you know, just standing in the gym, getting my reps, doing whatever the staff needs me to do. So when they call my name, I'm ready. So, you know, just taking advantage of the opportunity that they, they are giving me and trying to make the most of it. And, you know, it's for, for us to continue to keep winning, you know, try to get the, for our for our play in, playoff spot. So we're trying to avoid the play in. So you know we we playing for playoffs right now. So we know we know that we're going into this road trip that we need to handle business. So. What's the mindset of a player when you're getting minutes at one point, then not getting minutes, and then getting back minutes again? How do you continue to keep yourself sharp when you're going through those peaks and valleys in that way? Yeah, you know, for me, it's just being a pro. You know, not whether I'm playing or if I'm not playing, and, you know, just still working on my game, you know, trying to, you know, work to continue to get better, develop my game. So for me, it's just standing in the gym. I'm a gym rat, so I love being in the gym. Yeah. So if, for me, it's just, uh, just standing in the gym. So when my name is called, I know I'm going to be ready. So it's just, so just me, just once, once I hear my name, just going out there and performing now. How do you stay encouraged in those moments, whether it be through something personal that you do? How do you stay and keep yourself encouraged and motivated? Uh, yeah, for me, you know, I, I, I try to through prayer, God, you know, and then also my teammates, you know, do a good job of, you know, continue to lift me up, you know, keep my head high. And for, for our, I feel like we have a great team. Like, everybody wants to see everybody do good. So I feel like that's very rare for a lot of teams where you, where you have a lot of people that just wants to see everyone, everybody, you know, wants to do good. So I feel like when you have that type of, you know, have them type of teammates, you know, it makes, it, like, it makes a lot of things easier to get through. And I feel like, so, yeah. You guys have won seven of eight. What was mm -hmm. the message, though, in the locker room when you guys had lost five of six about staying encouraged and staying positive about what mm -hmm. you guys were capable of and now getting back on track the way that you guys have? Yeah, you know, when we were in those film sessions, we, we, we talked with amongst each other and uh, what we had to be better at. And we knew defensively it was going to start on the defensive side. And, you know, we had to be better defensively. And then, you know, we have two of the best scorers in the NBA. So, you know, just get, get trusting in them to, you know, make plays for, for all of us. And, you know, having their backs on the defensive side. So, yeah. As a playmaker, we're seeing growth in you as far as some of the reads that you're making, working mm -hmm. with Gafford and Lively and making some of those reads. How have you assessed yourself as a much better playmaker as you continue to grow in your game? Yeah. You know, when I'm out there, you know, I, I'm seeing the floor better and, you know, making my reads quicker. So when I'm out there, I'm just make, trying to make quick decisions. And like you said, I progressed on this, something that I worked on, you know, been in the gym working on, watching film. And trying to, you know, continue to better my reads, and when I'm out there, you know, get to my spots. So has yeah. the game slowed down for you in that way? Yeah, the, yeah, the game has slowed down a lot for me. Yeah, so when I'm out there, I feel comfortable, and you know, just trying to play at my pace. Last couple questions for you. Now moving forward here, what is the expectation for this team with 12 games left? About what you guys want to accomplish now going forward for the rest of the season? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we want to finish out strong, obviously, but you know, trying to keep this streak going, and you know. Keep, keep things on the good side, you know. We just want to keep winning and cut trusting in each other. And yeah. Do you find yourself paying attention to the standings a little bit, or is it more so? Look, we got to focus on uh, what we've got going on here, knowing how tight things are. In the yeah, yeah, I, yeah. We, I, I'm pretty sure players look at the standings, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I look at it uh, just to see what, what place we're in. But it's for sure something that people are aware about and knowing, like going in these next couple of games, these are very important for our seeding. So yeah. yeah.
Last one, what message do you have for Mavericks fans about how much excitement there is building for this team and this group and looking forward to the rest of the year? Uh, we're super excited, you know, to get back in front of our, our, our fans, you know, put on a show for them, you know, a couple more games left in the regular season, so we want to finish out strong. And, you know, can't wait for the playoffs. So, yeah. yeah. All right, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. So, again, thanks to Jaden Hardy for sitting down with me and spending some time with me. As you hear, a young man that's growing in his game, getting more confidence as he continues to expand his role on this team. And Jason Kidd having said recently that he wants to find more minutes and opportunities for Hardy to be able to get on the floor, which is massive for him as he continues to not only grow in terms of his overall game, but what he will mean to this team from a playmaking standpoint, his ability to knock down shots from the outside and provide yet another element of scoring that makes this offense, particularly the second unit, much more dangerous. So for the Mavericks, it's all about now moving forward and clicking on the cylinders that they need to to ensure a consistency down the stretch to give them the best chance and opportunity to be able to finish in the top six of the West. And they'll face a Utah team that will have Lori Markinen, that will have Jordan Clarkson as well to be able to play and make things difficult. And we know how difficult it has been for the Mavericks at times to win in Salt Lake City. So they will have to come ready to play against Utah, who will give everything that they can to try and beat them and play spoiler because that is a team in terms of the Mavericks who will have a target on their back no matter whom they are playing down the stretch. Still with a couple of games left against the Golden State Warriors, a sudden Houston Rockets team that's extremely hot who, as of this recording, has won eight straight games, find themselves just a game out of the play-in situation as far as a 10th spot is concerned as well. The Mavericks have got some tough games down the stretch, and they cannot look past Utah if they want to find themselves gaining the momentum they need to before they can't take on the Sacramento Kings a couple of games this week. But the Mavericks have put themselves in a really good position to be able to play their best basketball going down the stretch, led by Luka, who's going to be first team all NBA for the fifth consecutive year. Kyrie Irving, who's playing the best basketball of his recent career in Dallas, having, of course, those three years in Brooklyn where it was turbulent there, but now coming over to Dallas and playing and now being a much more mature version of himself as veteran leader guy, Mark Stein detailing how comfortable Kyrie Irving is in Dallas with Markeith Morris, a longtime friend and now, of course, teammate here in Dallas. God, Sham God, a longtime family friend that's here in Dallas, as of course, as an assistant coach. The growing relationship with Luca. Obviously, with Jason Kidd, whom they share a birthday with, does Kyrie and Jason Kidd. The Mavericks have done everything that they possibly can to put the player in position to succeed night in and night out. And he has remained healthy to be on the floor to allow this offense to flourish. And for Luka, a sidekick that can allow him to be able to win. He's not playing well offensively, which is very rare, to still have another guy that can shoulder the offensive load. But we know when both of them are on, this team offensively is extremely difficult to stop, and you've seen how the numbers have borne that out throughout the course of the season. And another thing to keep an eye on down the stretch as well, with the Mavericks now season-high 12 games above 500, could Luka Doncic get himself into the top three of the MVP discussion and maybe, maybe like a late charge in terms of the MVP discussion? We saw how Joel Embiid was able to do that during the last stretch of the NBA season a year ago to win the league's MVP. Could Luka Doncic have a similar stretch to be able to do the same thing for the Mavericks and maybe steal the league's MVP from whom I think right now is the MVP favorite in Nikola Jokic. But Doncic will have a golden opportunity to do so with massive gains potentially against the Sacramento Kings, the Golden State Warriors, the Houston Rockets, Luka Doncic could have a similar stamp on the MVP race going forward for the rest of the year. But that's an individual accolade that will only come along as his team wins ball games throughout the rest of the season. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, a 9-3 and three finish would allow this team to finish with 50 wins. And if you're finishing with 50 wins and in the top six, the precedent has been set that a player with the profile statistically that Luka Doncic has winning 50 games getting comfortably into the playoffs, that's the recipe for winning an NBA's MVP. And that, to me, is another interesting element 
down the stretch, among others. Josh Green will remain out, of course, with his ankle sprain that he has. Max Akleba right now is battling some knee soreness, so that'll be something to monitor as well as he provides flexibility for you in your closing lineups, especially playing the small ball five and closing lines that include P.J. Washington as well. But all of this is culminating into the most important road trip of this season for this Mavericks team with a chance to continue to solidify themselves, not only in the playoffs, but really enforce the conversation that they are a true contender in the West. And by playing teams such as the Sacramento Kings, who they got to have games and wins against, this team, this team will have the chance to do it. My expectation for this team right now, based off of what they've done, if you can ideally get out of this five-game road trip at above 500 at 3-2, and two, I think that's a massive W for this team. But if you can go 4-1, and one, and obviously a perfect 5-0 and oh would be the best-case scenario. But for me, my expectation is, is that they go 3-2 and two in this five-game road trip, split the games in Sacramento. But you've got to start by getting a win against Utah on Monday and then finding a way to split those games on the road against the Sacramento Kings as you continue to road trip from there and then see how things happen in front of you and behind you as far as the Kings and the Suns are concerned for spot six, seven, and eight in the West. But all that will be played out here over the next 11 days, and I'll have you covered right here on Inside the Mavs, of course, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak. That'll do it for this episode of Inside the Mavs, again, presented by Aura. Thank you to Jaden Hardy for spending some time with me on the show today. You can download and subscribe to Inside the Mavs wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. You can find it on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, at Kevin Gray Sports, make sure you like it, comment on the video, and subscribe to the channel as well. I'll have, of course, game recaps from each and every game this week, so make sure you hit that notification button if you're subscribed on YouTube so you know when the videos drop, and also like and comment on this video to make sure that the videos go viral as well and on the podcast as well. Again, my name is Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on 97 One The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. This has been Inside the Mavs. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Peace.